Are you ready for the final game in the classic Splatterhouse series? Probably not. <laughs> uh, this is where shit goes off the rails big time. Yeah, this is a sharp left turn for the series, almost as much as one Paku Graffiti was. Hmm. Here's the star of our game, a spinning red crystal. Not really. But it made for an interesting game. <laughs> it's real, but interesting. I wonder what game this is, though. I can't wait for this scroll to finish so I can finally find out. Ooh, cup teeth. Ah, and here's the uh, eclipse that's so prevalent in the remake. And the Caesar strobe light that is not popular with anyone. Frankly, I'm tripping balls. <laughs> So's Rick. Then, for some reason, Godzilla got let in there. <laughs> yeah, that little close-up on the eyes was the first change that is unique to this version of the game, which we'll be talking a little more about later. Apart from the last one, though. Oh yeah. Turns out this game is called Splatterhouse. Are you surprised? I'm very surprised. Did not see that. <laughs> That intro had nothing to do with anything. Yep. Welcome to Splatterhouse 3. Now we get a little tutorial from the mask. Yeah, that, that actually is one of the imp most important things in this game. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to detail everything you need to know here. Spends a little too long on the uh, power-up mechanic. Hmm. We're not going to be using it that often. Yeah, it's nice to have as a safety net, but you're not going to be relying on it. It's an excellent boss killer, and that's about it. Hmm. Three minutes in, and we are finally in the first room of the game. Yep. This is actually Rick's house. Yeah, guy upgraded heavily. Yeah. I read that it's a palatial mansion in Connecticut, of all places. <laughs> That's fame for them. Yep. I like to think it's because uh, he's a movie star, as established in Juan Paco Graffiti. Very true. He would have been getting some mad re uh, residuals. Yeah, absolutely. Even though... It became his actual life after the filming of that movie. Mm. Here's the map. As you can see, there's about a hundred rooms on this floor. And there's our first pallet swap, only three and a half minutes into the game. <laughs> yep. That's their main way of achieving enemy variety. Yeah. Although there is a lot of enemy variety in this game. Unfortunately, for every one enemy, there's like seven or eight different palette swaps of it, so... Yeah, It absolutely. feels like there's a lot less than there actually is. <laughs> also, the... We're mostly going to be seeing, um... Yeah, headless zombies in this level. Yeah. These guys are basically the... Um... Chicken head... Uh... Mark twos. Yeah, they've decayed even further than the chicken heads. Yeah. And uh, the pink guy that you saw getting squished there is pretty much an analog of the Mimi. Yeah, they're very similar in visual design at least. Yeah. They both have the long stretchy claw attack as well. Yep. And there's that fucking spirit guy coming in from the right of the screen. Yeah, weapons in this game are simultaneously more useful and more useless than in the previous yeah. one. You can keep them for... As soon for... as they hit the ground, yeah. the spirit guy comes and gets them. You can keep them for as long as you can, as long as you can keep hold of them. Which is harder yep. than it sounds. 
Especially with the cinder block there, because you have to throw it yeah. to hit anything. And of course... Now the door on the right here is a gold door. And that teleports us to a different area. Rick's homely garage. Yep. With a book. That book is an extra life. I guess it's some kind of Necronomicon, even though it looks like a library book. <laughs> yeah. Well, knowledge is power. Apparently. The spin attack that you saw there is also the single most powerful move in the game. Oh, yeah. Doesn't cost any yeah, health to them. use. Hits everything around you for a good amount of damage. And you're you invincible for five seconds, which is huge. Yep, you're also invincible while uh, performing it. So, yeah. Uh, you know, in a normal playthrough, there is no reason to do anything other than that all the time. Yeah, you absolutely cannot spin attack too much. Yeah, you're cheesing the game, but uh, this is pretty unforgiving at, at, at times, so fuck it. Turnabout's fair play. Yep. If you want the good ending, you have to complete levels very, very quickly, and to do that, you need to spin kick. Yep. This Here's is a nice little set piece. The bleeding picture. <laughs> Keep that in mind as a landmark, we're going to be seeing it a few more times as I explore this first floor. Overall, though, this is a game that basically encourages speedrunning. Yeah, Although, um, absolutely. I don't think there's been any official speedruns of it, which is kind of weird. It's difficult to speedrun because of something I'll be showing off at the end of this video, hmm. but if you go too fast, you get punished. Yeah. So, yeah, it both encourages and makes difficult speedrunning. And here's a reference to um, one of the first achievements that I got in the remake. Yep. That's right, that is the reference to the remake. <laughs> Not the other way around. So they went I back and they went forward in time and plagiarized themselves <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Cunning plan, no one would have seen it coming. In Rick's absolutely disgusting kitchen. It's kind of like mine, but I have fewer rotting carcasses in the uh, cupboard. Yeah. Hopefully nothing is trying to escape from your fridge, either. Uh, define escape. <laughs> like, under its own volition, or because other things are trying to push it out? Either one is less than ideal. <laughs> There's your health powered up there. Yep, those pulsating hearts will uh, refill a good chunk of Rick's health. First time I saw them, I thought they were some kind of weird, fleshy baseball bat. Sorry, baseball. <laughs> yeah, they have different names depending on the English or Japanese version. And I forget what name they are in this version. It doesn't particularly matter. And a disgusting monster is moving in on Jennifer. It's always bad news. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and back south through some rooms we've already cleared out. Yeah. Game's quite good in that it doesn't respawn enemies on you when you're exploring. There's one or two rooms that have respawns, but they're easy, and I'm pretty sure they're there so that you can grind health in case you lose too much of it. Mm. So this is a couple of... one of a few rooms that have um, non-combat challenges in them. I lost my stick, but that's okay, because we're going to the room where the stick ends up. Yeah. Any weapons you lose wind up in storage rooms like this. Yeah, they get dragged to a room that has a bunch of uh, floating heads in it. Yeah, and It's helpful, but at the same time, the rooms are usually kind of out of your way. Yeah. Basically, once a weapon gets taken, it's gone. If you're going for a speed run. And a palette swap of the raptor guys. Yep. They're pretty shameless about reusing enemies in this. Yeah, absolutely. I don't even know why they palette swapped those guys. They're almost identical to the uh, orangish ones. Yeah, especially this early in the game. I mean, we've seen, what, two, three palette swaps of these guys already? 
Yeah, they did some unique things with the zombies. There was a room back there where they looked the same as the weakest version, but they actually did about three times as much damage and could kill me in a couple of hits. About four hits would have killed me. I wouldn't be so bad if the more powerful versions got upgraded attacks, for example. Yeah. But, or, you know, had more attacks. But not really. What you see is what you get. They start doing that with the uh, later enemies, but these early ones, they're just sort of introducing the whole concept. Mm. Those fat guys there always drop items when they die. And Jennifer's dead. Well... We have failed. <laughs> but the game keeps going. It's, yeah, it's not a game over. This game's... This is the last time we're going to be seeing this yeah. landmark. This game's pretty infamous for its multiple endings. Yeah. Some of them get really fucking creepy, as I've mentioned before. <laughs> yep. Here's another room that has respawns. It's always these big fat guys because they drop items. So they're here in case you need items. I really, it is a very nice touch how when enemies are close to death, they start falling apart. Yeah. All enemies have an injured look as well as a uninjured look. Yeah. Uh, that includes most of the bosses as well, as I remember. Yep. And it's it, it doesn't really do much in the long run, but it is a really nice touch. Oh yeah exactly. Uh, Goya's uh Kronos eating his children. Yes. Heavily digitized and washed out, but it's an appropriate touch, yeah. although Rick <laughs> apparently had that in his house all along. And I've uh, restarted the level, taking this much more direct path that you can see in the corner there. And I have four and a half minutes left on the clock, which I'm going to need most of if I want a good ending. Mm. I only showed off all the levels, in, or all the rooms in this level, because um, most of them get reused in later levels. So we won't need to see them all next time. As, as we've established, Plus, this is a game that is not shameless about reusing its asset. Absolutely not. Also, this room had, this uh, stage, had much more unique assets in it, like um, Saturn devouring his son and um, the bleeding photo and stuff like that. Future levels will have no more than one such unique asset per level. Yeah, throwing everything at the Which start to impress you, and yeah, then absolutely. completely forgetting it. This game came out one year after Splatterhouse 2, hmm. so I believe they got really, really ambitious with the design, and then completely ran out of time. Well, the game's pretty much a forerunner of the Freeform Sandbox game, if you think about it. In a lot of ways, yeah. As long as you get to the end, you're entirely free to fuck about as much as you want. Yep. And you get different rewards based on how well you do. Yeah, surprisingly ambitious. It's cleverly designed, yeah. But they overreach their ability in a lot of ways. Yep. Finally powering up. Just to get unceremoniously knocked down <laughs> by this boss. And then you cock punch a horrible monster. Oh yeah. Powered up Rick has really excellent grab moves, which is why <laughs> he's good at destroying single targets. Yeah. Oh, uh, Super Rick does not fuck about. Oh yeah. Which is yet another thing they took for the remake. Rick's ability to power up Berserker mode in the remake. Yeah. And there's the French bread attack. Yep. <laughs> and I immediately grabbed him after I knocked his head off and killed him. Because in the corner there is what happens if you don't immediately kill him. He gets a new attack, and he will just keep you pinned to the floor for a very long time, mm. and it's super frustrating. Uh, Rick, or, what, what are you doing there? <laughs> yeah, that image is not very good. <laughs> All these images have been replaced in the uh, Xbox 360 version here. In the original Genesis, they were actual actors. Mm. And they looked a lot less shitty, but um, presumably they didn't have the rights to reuse those images because the actors 
contracts were up or something. Yeah, probably. Um, that yep. the fact that Jennifer so looks a hell of a lot like Jennifer Connelly. <laughs> um, from uh, when she appeared in Suspiria. Mm. Good movie, worth checking out. Dario Argento. Also, we are not ascending to the second floor, as Rick said. We're going to Stage X, the Strange Zone. It's a little bonus level you get for completing the level very fast. I believe you need at least two minutes left on the clock to get here. So instead of going to the second floor to get urgent care for Jenny's infection, we're going outside and beating up monsters. Sticking about, up stealing extra lives. some books. <laughs> it's just a brief little diversion reward for doing particularly well. There is a reward for doing it even faster, but uh, it's not canon. The end result is too good, so I couldn't show it off just just yet. But we will be seeing it a little later. And indeed, mm -hmm. what the fuck. So that's the end of one stage <laughs> after 15 minutes. Yeah, we're in for the long run here, folks. Yep. Join us next time for another stage of Splatterhouse 3. See you then.